Hello and welcome to the Vedanta Society Center in Hollywood, California. I'm Mike Simmons, the founder and president of Astronomers Without Borders. And we're delighted to start this li Living Legend series, bringing uh, the, all the world one of the most important people in amateur astronomy in, in history, perhaps since Galileo first made a telescope and pointed it to the sky, John Dobson. Uh, John, thanks for being here with us. Well, don't thank me. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, John is now living here. John, you've been uh, at the Vedanta Center one or another for quite some time. Well, I was here a little over two years ago and I had a stroke. I can't get out of here. <laughs> and uh, uh, We had to close down my place in San Francisco. I can't manage it. I can just barely walk. But you're the day before I had this stroke, I was running up the hill out here. I was already 93 years old, but I was running up the hill out here. Well, you're doing still remarkably well. You had your 95th well, birthday. Well, for 95 years old, I'm probably better than most people. <laughs> That's very good. Well, we're, we're delighted to be able to do this, and you have had an impression on people around the world with... Uh, the things that you've done in popularizing uh, sidewalk astronomy and telescope making? Well, let me tell you what happened. Back in the 60s, if you went out with the astronomers, they're taking pictures. They have little telescopes that weighed about as much as a coffee can, and they had tracking devices that track the things across the sky for photography, and the tracking device weighs half as much as a Ford. So nothing was happening. There were, no, there were no star parties. If you went out with the astronomers, there's nothing to look through. They're taking pictures. And while they were still doing that, we're running through the national parks with a 24-incher that sleeps three in the tube. That's why the feces hit the fan. Well, and you were really the first one to, to do this, to take telescopes out to the sidewalks of the streets. I think the so, people yeah. Were. I think so. And there were, there were a few here and there, but you organized the San Francisco Sidewalk Astronomers. But there were, the people that got telescopes out on the sidewalk before were charging money for it. Right. One time we took the telescopes to a place here, and the, the cops wouldn't let us get us out because we would be competing with somebody who charges money for looking at the moon. We're not allowed to compete with him. <laughs> see. So what was your idea? What, why this passion to, to bring astronomy to the people? I don't know. When I first saw the moon through a telescope, I thought, my God, everybody's got to see this. I don't know why it happens to me that way, but it happened to me that way. What was your, your first thought, your first impression? We all have a sort of a, a wow moment when we first see the moon or Saturn through a telescope. Well, I heard that you could make a telescope, and so... I knew where the ship's windows were. Eventually, I bought four and a half tons of ship's windows. The portholes. Portholes, yeah. And uh, so we used to make telescopes out of those things. So the first telescope we made was a 12-incher. But we made it out of a porthole glass, you see. And I saw the third quarter moon. But that's what happened to me. I thought, my God, everybody's got to see this. I had no idea it would look as though you're going to come in on for a land for a landing. I had no idea the moon would look like that. And so, how many people do you think you've shown the moon to over the years? Oh, I don't know. That's probably the close of a million. I have no idea. I, I so. used to see. I made a. I made. Uh, I made a hundred thousand people a year, but I meet them in the middle of the night. I don't know what they look like. <laughs> Well, you've been all over the world, actually, and a lot of traveling around the U.S. I've, met a lot I've of I've been people. to a lot of places, yes. I haven't been to Africa, but I've been to a lot of places, yeah. Well, you know, and we are, are being viewed now. This is being watched by people around the world as well. This is being what? Watched by people around the world. Oh, yeah. And we have questions also from people, and we have one from uh, Pakistan, actually, I'd like to, to ask you. Go ahead. And... He's asking um, what your advice is for amateurs and enthusiasts in developing countries who are left confounded by the technological progress making telescopes more unaffordable, that even the Dobsonian-type telescopes now are commanding high prices for someone in Pakistan and other developing countries. And it seems that, that astronomy and the industries that it powers are unsustainable. They become more expensive 
as they get more features. Well, that's true. I often ad advise people, if you want to make a telescope, come to California. We've got all these cardboard tubes that are made for pouring concrete columns. They're already made for us. We don't have to make them. And we've got all these ship's windows. But ship's windows are becoming scarce now They're, because they don't take them out of the ships anymore. They sink the ships with the glass in them. It's too expensive to get it out. So but I bought four and a half tons of ship's windows, you see. We had a lot of glass. Did you go through all of that four and a half oh, tons? Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord, no. But we made hundreds of telescopes out of that glass. And we had all sorts of sizes, you see. We had seven and a half inches, eight and a half inches, nine and a half inches, ten and a half inches, twenty-four and a half inches. We had big ones like that. That's what our 24 was made out of, one of those ship's windows, 24 and a half inches in the diameter. Do you know why it's always 24 and a half, why 10 and a half? No. Because if you put a 24 inch glass in a 24 inch hole, it goes straight out to sea. <laughs> well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> but that, that 24 inch telescope, the first one you made, uh, th that's a famous telescope. I saw that first when I first... Yeah, but it's uh, not set up like that anymore. No. We, the, the tube and rocker and all that stuff was left out in the rain and it all went too. Oh, really? So that's not set up like that anymore. But in, in the meantime, though, that had been taken around to national parks all over oh, the Oh, yes, US. that's been probably through 25 national parks probably, yeah. And, and you've estimated how far that has traveled, that telescope. And it's been, it's been the 24 inch has been more than 100, 100 nights at Glacier Point in Yosemite, that's at 7,000 feet something. Mm -hmm. And you told me earlier you thought it had traveled 80,000 miles. Probably. Oh yes, we've hauled it. It, it weighs 600 pounds, but we've hauled it more than 80,000 miles, and it's too late to tell me it's not portable. Well, you managed to get it around. Of course, you had that big bus in the early days. You guys would drive around. We had a bus, and we had a 40. Yeah, we had a bus, and and, and the 24 inch used to run in its own trailer. Now, you mentioned something else. It's not usually mentioned when you're talking about the specifications of telescopes. The 24-inch sleeps three. Sleeps three in the tube, yeah. I've slept in the tube with two other people twice. But it's a big tube. We made it with a 30-inch tube. Mm -hmm. If I were doing it now, I'm not sure that I would still do it with a 30-inch tube. But that left a lot of room between the edge of the glass and the and the cardboard tube and we had it lined with half inch styrofoam and then painted black inside of that right and you mentioned that that telescope has been to the glacier point in yosemite a hundred times is that that no your no it's been a hundred nights there a hundred nights there right. in the course of 12 years is that your uh, favorite spot in the parks? well that's one of the favorite spots in the national parks because the seeing conditions there are about as good as you can get them in any national park. And uh, so we, oh, I have to tell you, I have to tell you a, a story. When we first took the 24-incher up to Glacier Point and set it up there in the middle of the afternoon, the security ranger sees it. He says, you have to take it down before dark. So I was ready to pack it and leave. But you see, Brian Rhodes, who he made the telescope with me, Brian Rhodes, this cool-headed guy, he gets the ranger and takes him over to the concession stand, and they call the rangers at the floor of the valley, and we are staying. <laughs> However, that guy never did like our telescope, and he made me park when we had the bus. He made me park it nearly a quarter of a mile away. <laughs> You couldn't throw a stone from where the bus was parked to where the telescope was. What other parks did you like to travel to? Oh, there are a lot of parks. We did a lot of work at Glacier Point. And I know, never mind Glacier Point, at, at uh, Crater Lake in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Crater Lake in Oregon. We did a, had a lot of telescopes there. Oh, and I have to tell you another funny story about that. KCET wanted to get us on the on the news, you see. So they get out there with, they get it, they rent an aeroplane and drive up and fly up there and then get in, 
in rented vehicles and get up to Glacier to Crater Lake. And we have a quarter moon and we have a 36-inch telescope there and a 24-inch telescope and a whole lot of other big telescopes there. And we have a quarter moon and we got all these hundreds of people looking through the telescopes. And I said, shoot now. He says, no, we want the glamour of night. So he does not shoot now and he waits till it gets dark and turns on his floodlights and that's the end of the evening. <laughs> but he learned his lesson. When they were doing the thing for KCET later on, we were in San Francisco. I said, get it up, we'll get the telescope out of at uh, Ghirardelli Square. He told me afterwards he didn't think anything would happen at Ghirardelli Square. But he learned his lesson. Don't fuss with this guy. He knows more than you do. A lot of people have learned that lesson over the years, John. <laughs> so, you, and you've traveled to other countries as well doing so. Oh, yes, a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. But when we went to India, the, we were not able to use the telescopes that were sent to India for us. They kept them in, they kept them in storage till we left, which was three or four, four months, four months. They turned them over to us just before we left and they were both broken. Oh. Well, I, I know that we have people watching from India as well. And uh, we want to go now to uh, a question. We have some groups watching. Okay, and go ahead. To see them as well. I don't know if it's from India or somewhere else, but uh, we'll, we'll see what they have to say.